I'm out. Oh, yeah. Start. Phone. You can't oh. afford me right now. I got things to say. <laughs> Turn me up. He wants to hear my opinions about the life world. I can't wait. I can't wait to talk about my life. I'm holding court. <laughs> so I'm holding my life. <laughs> Tell you about my life. <laughs> man, what's going on? Dude, nothing, man. I ain't been up to a whole bunch of nothing. Man, yeah, that sounds good to me. Yeah. It's well, been, I like it. <laughs> it's been fun. The guy that is taking over my life. I've got two things. My life. <laughs> yeah. I got two things that I'm doing right now. I mentioned one of them earlier, but I, I left the name out so it wouldn't be all information I've already mentioned to you. <clears throat> I was watching, I got down this little YouTube um, rabbit hole, you know how it is. Oh, and I'm yeah. watching all these old interviews. Um, there's this girl in Canada, and I can't believe I forgot her freaking name, man. Atout is the last name, A T O U T, or it's the last name of the account. And it's, I see, I think it's Alice. But anyway, it's a cool, it's a show, it's a cool show. And it's apparently about like um, music normally, but she interviews wrestlers a lot. So I'm watching her interview the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, and just cool people. And it's all good. And her Omega interviews are awesome because I like that guy. So it's, yeah. it's very, very cool. Uh, I will say definitely stick around to watch her interview Jay White because when she interviews the Young Bucks, it's this Canadian journalist interviewing the Young Bucks. And when she interviews Kenny Omega, it's a Canadian journalist interviewing uh, Kenny Omega. When she interviews Jay White, I don't know which one of them is hitting on the other one harder. It's like they just, man, they just is just instantly like Jay White. I want to jump. Jay White. I don't want to jump his bones. And Jay White's like, sounds great to me, love. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's awesome because it's really, it's, it's innocent and sweet. But it's just like, well, go on, y'all. If you guys, if you guys go out, I hope you have a real good time. Yeah. <laughs> Switchblade. Switchblade. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I do love Jay. It's funny because she's talking about people complaining about Jay White's chops and how brutal they are. And he's like, well, good. She's like, he's talking about how, you know, just getting all of the crap kicked out of you. So that's what we do back and forth. So then she was asking like, okay, well, you're the guy nobody wants chops from. Who's the guy you don't want them from? And it was fascinating because I never, I never got to see this guy work a ton, but instantly he goes with Mara Fuji and I'm like, that's crazy. I don't think I've ever heard that before. And then all of a sudden, every other interview I start watching where people talk about Marafuji, it's all oh, stiff. Oh god, Marafuji, good god. I'm like, all right, then I just don't I don't know how I missed that, but I missed that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, y'all just thought Kento, right. you just thought Kento was the one that was gonna stiff you to death. Yeah. <laughs> this is the oh, ones that sneak up on you. <laughs> dude, seriously. But anyway, I, I got way sidetracked. I'm sorry. In the discussion, in the interview with Kenny Omega, they get talking about anime. Obviously, you always talk to Kenny about video games and anime. Mm -hmm. And then he gets talking about the music in particular in this one anime he's watching called Yuri on Ice. And he's explaining that it's uh, he's it's about a uh, competitive ice skating. He's like, but the music, there's just there's really good music in there. And then he goes on to explain that he and Kota Ibushi had this idea to do like a, a duets album of them just singing songs. <laughs> and I, I'm like, yeah, dude. And she's like, man, I hope you revive that idea. And I'm like, yeah, me too. That would be awesome. But like you and I talk about, man, where it just seems that Kenny's been planning a lot of this stuff for a long time, probably just as, you know, wishful thinking, but he's put a lot of thought into this. When you start watching Yuri on Ice, it's like, this is exactly what the Golden Lovers is supposed to be. I'm like, this is totally yeah. what they're going for. And especially when you watch like the opening credits, I'm like, man, I want to do, I don't know how to edit anything for YouTube, but I want to learn because there are still song mashups, which I know people don't do anymore, but I don't care. There's songs I would love to hear played over each other. Um, but an idea uh, like a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, man? A co-highlight video, if you will. Of Kenny Omega, great Kenny Omega moments and great Kota Ibushi moments with the song. It's called um, History Maker is the name of it. It's Dean. I don't remember his last name, but History Maker Dean, it'll come up. And it's awesome. And I'm like, yes, if that was the soundtrack to my Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi highlight video, it, it has to happen. I got to do it. I got to learn how to do it so I can do it. <laughs> that sounds awesome. It's, it's great, man. I'm like, dude, ice skating. I'll check that out because... 
anime strange there's so much of it that i know i should watch and i've never watched but fortunately yuri on ice most of it anyway is on youtube and i'm like hell yeah let's do it because man you know how it is dude apparently anime blu-rays and dvds are the only ones that people still will pay crazy money for which i understand it's specialized thing and people that like it really like it but i looked that sucker up and saw the price of it and was like let me go do this illegally my god (laughs) you know it's 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 not that it's not that terrible (laughs) i can track down a cheap copy yeah yeah (laughs) yeah absolutely yeah y'all y'all hook me up give me a deal and i'm I'm in but (laughs) yeah man Anyhow, I'm sorry, man. Like we said, we didn't really know what to talk about, so we just we've gone off the rails. Very nice. It's cool. My brain turned to wool mass, and I just don't know what's happening. If, uh, what a uh, one big thing that uh, happened this week that's had guys of at least I would say our age, most of our age, probably even a little bit older, but uh, the uh, Field of Dreams game was done this past week so oh man i missed that everybody was crying (laughs) crying. (laughs) it's you know it was it was uh i I thought it was a the 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 middle image i had in my head was i know the field the the dot the diamond out there in the middle of all the core the core (laughs) still exists and i was like are they actually going to play on that? Because I know they've had events there, and uh, they had an anniversary of the movie on MLB Network a few years ago, and they had a game there. And but I didn't realize that they had built like a almost like a minor league stadium right next to that diamond. Yeah, and that's what they played on. Because I was trying to picture them playing on that field. I was like. There ain't no way. Ain't nobody tear ass through that cord. <laughs> yeah. There ain't no way Major League Baseball is going to let this game go down. And if it is, it will just be a one-off. But it was and – it, and it's not a huge facility. It's, I think, eight or 9,000 people were able to be there, which is That's cool. s- still a decent amount of folks. Yeah. But uh, it's it's not what I had pictured in my head. But still, to to – even down to the player introductions walked out through the corn. Yeah, that's cool, man. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's the Yankees and the White Sox, and the White Sox are in the old school, you know. You know so, shows, man. Yeah, man. So That's cool, dude. It, it, I, I, as, as sappy and as silly as that movie is, I still love it. <laughs> and... Uh, it was just one of those games. That it it was it was fun to watch. Baseball is still real good about that. It's one of the things that, with all the talk about, well, baseball is really falling behind the times, man. They're not changing with the times. Really falling behind. Baseball has never struggled for fans. Baseball will never struggle for fans because it's such a unique game. If you love it, you pretty much love it instantly. And there's enough of us that love it. Instantly, I and mean, that's the whole thing. Have you ever been to a game and not seen little kids with t-ball gloves? Because I haven't. Little yeah. people, it's like y'all are crazy trying to pretend that baseball, baseball's dying. Now, y'all said the same thing about boxing for forty years. Then you had to go hat in hand and beg people to come and be on your prelims and your bullshit because the zone is killing you. Baseball's mm-hmm. the same way, man. They don't need your ass, and they know they don't need you. <clears throat> but the point being that there's a reason that. You know, oh, who was it? Uh, Whitman, I think, wrote poems about baseball. It's it's awesome. Baseball can have that romance. It's it's really quite neat, and well, it, we dig that shit. It's cool, man. Yeah. So it came down uh, to uh, I forget what it was. Is tied in like the it was uh, for some reason I thought it went into extra innings. It was the ninth inning. And uh, one of the White Sox the, hits the walk-off home run, and the White Sox win the game. So I was like, oh, that's the way it was meant to be. <laughs> oh, totally, man. It's all good. Yeah, Joe Jackson came out of the cornfield. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, Ray Liotta was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I dug it. I, I got a big kick out of that. So but that's, but that's one of those movies that, like, uh, 
basically called it called a baseball movie because of Field of Dreams, but it was just like it's it's kind of silly and kind of dumb, but I still love it. <laughs> I love Field of Dreams. That was one of my Costner movies I never really got away from. Kevin was strange because there's a couple of them. A couple of the big like epic y things are just not you know, I th- I thought that I you know, I want to say that I think this. I really think most people feel this way. All of the crap that got talked about water water world was unjustified. That to me, it seems mm-hmm. like we're gonna take this guy down. That's that, that's what it always feel? felt like to me too. That feels like that studio crap where they're just they're mad they got to pay the guy so much money. I totally agree with you because I don't know anyone mm-hmm. that didn't like it. I, I don't mm-hmm. know anyone that saw that movie that was just like, God, what a piece of shit. And the only complainer was, oh, my God, it cost how much to make? And I'm like, okay, if that's who's complaining about it, and it just it just seems dumb to me. Um, but, yeah, he's Costner's – there's several movies of his that I really do like, and that's one I love, that movie. I think that one's awesome. And then his other – I shouldn't say his other baseball movie because that doesn't narrow it down. Yeah. But um, the, the one with him and John C. Riley, the for love of the oh, game. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's a cool movie. Just th- that yeah. idea is cool, and then they just did a good job pulling it off. I like that one, man. Yeah. That one, I I remember sitting down and watching it when it came out, and just really liked it way more than I thought it would. Yeah, dude. And it just it doesn't get revisited as much as you know I think it should. <laughs> yeah, I would like for that one to get uh, another day in court. I, I really, I, mean, I think that MLB Network runs it every once in a while, but not as often. I would love it if he would, if it would get like heavy rotation, like because they do movies on there all the time. So, yeah, man. why not, man? Go right ahead. It's the Field of Dreams channel most of the time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they run Field of Dreams a lot, and uh, God, what else? It seems like there's another one that's on all the time. Bad News Bears is on there a lot, but it's not. You can't run the Bad News Bears too much. I don't mean to say that, but it's it's, uh, it's Field of Dreams and Mister Three Thousand. All the time. Yeah, Mister Three Thousand. They do run the hell out of that one. That is true. Yeah, I remember the Mister Three Thousand movie coming out, and me just my big motivation for watching the movie was like, what are they justifying taking the three thousandth hit away for? And it was so convoluted and stupid. I don't even remember. I can never remember what caused it to go late. Every time I watch the movie, I remind you like, oh, that's dumb. That's just stupid. Come on. Yeah, come it's on. cool. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> I think, I think the, 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 there's like a game that doesn't count. And so it's like, it's not just like one hit. He has, I think it's like three hits or something he has to come back and get or something like that. It's something crazy. So it's like, man, come on, whatever. <laughs> Whatever, mother. <laughs> that, would been, that would have been Bernie's actual reaction. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, they would run Cobb a good bit. Um, and I, Cobb's one of those movies that, like, man, uh, not not so much a baseball movie as it is just uh, Tommy Lee Jones and Robert Wool just having a good time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I think that one... Cobb reminds me of, uh, you know, biopics have always been a thing. It's strange. People are so strange about, oh, God, the music biopic. Oh, God. Well, they've been doing this shit forever. But they've been around for a long time. Cobb felt um, ones I think are kind of underrated. Cobb is one of them. Nixon's one of them. That movie's underrated as shit. That's a very good movie. It's not pleasant, but it's very good. And people always whine, Anthony Hopkins doesn't look anything like Richard Nixon. It's Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. He's playing Richard Nixon. Dude, who gives a shit what he looks like? It was awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. And then my other one that I think belongs on the list, and I really I wish it had gotten more love, was um, Will Smith's Ali, man. He was mm-hmm. awesome in that movie. That was very, very good. very good. But that one, to me, like we were talking with, it seemed like it was time to kind of take the wrecking ball to cost. It was like that with Michael Mann, which I get because everybody hates that guy because apparently he's the biggest prick on earth, but he does make real good movies, and that was one of them. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember watching uh, watching Ali, and when the uh, movie that was out this past year, the Night in Miami movie with its Ali and the the, the I guess the problem with the movies, I don't think this actually happened, but it's based on like a theoretical Jim Brown and uh, Ali and Sam Cooke and uh, 
Is it Malcolm X or Farrakhan? I, I think it's Malcolm X that they all met in this room in Miami and th- they had their discussion over this night. But anyway, point is, I, every time I heard mention that movie, he's like, didn't they kind of do this in Ali? Wasn't Ali better? <laughs> you know, so I, I, I dug that movie a ton. And it was yeah. very, very good. I, I, really, I thought there's, there's, <laughs> My family was never big into... Christmas Day, we're going out. We're going to watch us a movie, but that's one of the ones that we all went out and watched yeah. on Christmas. And it's Christmas Eve. I'm pretty sure it was Christmas Day, and just dug the crap out of it. Yeah, dude, I'm with you, man. I got to sneeze, so if I dip off, I apologize. That's all good. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, man. I've been walking the last couple of days, and I'm not sure if it's because I'm stupid and I leave my ceiling fan on and it gets me sick. Or there's just something in the air, but I'm sneezing a lot. Sorry about that. But anyway, I'm with you on Ali. I've always thought that movie was underrated. And uh, what was the other one? I was thinking the other day about, and we'll get to music biopics in a minute because I mentioned, and I don't want to leave you in suspense. I got to tell you my horrible oh, idea for a movie. Man, that's that's another uh, Oliver Stone. Uh, Doors, the Doors was another one that people would. I always talk crap about. I thought that one was awesome. People hate the doors, and it's strange. I think people hate the doors. <laughs> it's they hate the doors. They hate Nixon. They hate Oliver Stone. It's just their marriage. <laughs> uh, apparently so. And I guess that's my thing is I actually like quite a lot of his movies, man. Like I think yeah. Natural Born Killers is one where the director's cut makes a big difference. I just I like the director's cut way better. I, I like that movie. Um, Nixon's real, real good. Uh, what am I not thinking of? Uh, Wall Street, I never cared for. That's the one I think is overrated as shit. Yeah. Uh, Platoon, I've actually never seen. But um, I know I'm forgetting a huge one, but the one that I'm trying to finish on is Born on the Fourth of July. Because Born on, the Four- Born on the Fourth of July is, I have often said that I'm really glad that Dustin Hoffman won his Oscar for Rain Man. Yeah. Tom Cruise not winning for Best Supporting Actor is highway robbery he should have gotten that he was great and then as far as best actors concerned that was his that was his best actor nod that he probably really should have won me what i get it he's pretty boy tom and all that but he's pretty damn good at his job too and those two i'm like i feel kind of bad for him uh it's it's not i can say this is the one this is a oliver some movie i've seen the most i think the one i've seen most recently was uh jfk Mm, I, I've never seen JFK, man. Man, it's 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 one of those movies that I I don't know why, uh, but uh, that w- one of the fun things about Oliver Stone's movies is I think people sat down and they were going to watch JFK. And like Oliver Stone's going to tell us his opinion on what happened, and like yeah. and that's not what that movie was at all. It's is the same thing with W. People people wanted W to be a hit piece, and it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. And the yeah. thing about W, the only frustrating thing I have with that movie, uh, I thought Brolin was great. Really, really great. Um, Richard Dreyfus is incredibly good in that movie because you've just, it's it's a strange thing. It's very, very difficult. And we got, um, excuse me, we got uh, oh, Christian Bale to do it where it's like, yeah, play Dick Cheney. And boy, you talk about a movie that just shit the bed. And we talked about it at the time. It's like, you can't do this shit with Trump in the White House. You can't because with based off for myself, my own personal perceptions of Donald Trump, that's one thing. But with the narrative that the media is pushing about that guy, you can't talk about that guy every single day and then be like, oh, and now go watch this movie about Dick Cheney. And I love I love Christian Bale. And I'm really happy because we talked about where all the pictures made the rounds of his belly and said, man, Christian Bell got fat. Oh my God. And it's like, we talked about it at the time. It's like, boy, I don't know shit about this guy. Do you guarantee yeah, you this is for a role? And it was yeah. but anyway, Richard Dreyfuss is fantastic in W because it's just, I, I'm a, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't seen Christian Bale do it, but Dreyfuss makes Cheney simultaneously like just complete scum that you are afraid of. 
he does a good job. It's like it's not just that you hate him because he's repulsive. He's scary. He's scary, man. Like, dude, that's a that's nice work, man. Um, the, the only person that I thought fell on their face, and it's not it's mean to say it that way, but she's the only person that got a tap on the butt for that movie was um, Tandy Newton as Condoleezza Rice. It was awful. It's like a bad parody. I'm like, I can't believe this is what. I can't believe this is the one that people are giving praise to. That sucks, man. Pardon me. I'm Belchie. Anyhow, I, I didn't mean to discuss Oliver Stone movies, but I'm with you. I, but yeah, it's weird. We were just talking about Costner, and now we're talking about JFK, and I'm like, I really do need to see that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's uh, JFK is probably one of the biggest, uh, kind of like how uh, this, the Showtime. Uh, relaunch of Twin Peaks was like apparently anybody in Hollywood that David Lynch heard said wanted to do it. He's like, come on out and be in it, guys. It's fine. It's Twin come Peaks. On. The door is open. You come on in. You make your lines up. Yeah. Have a sandwich on your way out the door. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> come on down and party with us. It feels like it, it is anybody. The biggest people in Hollywood, this was like 94, 5-ish, if I remember right, something like that. Everybody is in that movie. It is everybody. And everyone. It, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Come on now. It's, it's literally got, it is a who's who of who was, uh, <laughs> Oliver, get me an award. <laughs> so it Dude, was seriously, but uh, the I, it what that this I just think that's what's kind of cool about it is uh, the story that they're telling is the after the fact the assassination has gone down and it's the trial afterwards. Yeah, and uh, and I think people talk. Man, Oliver's just gonna tell us he's gonna everything that went down and why it happened and who did it and all this and it's like it gets so convoluted and out there because i was like man nobody knows that's it it (laughs) reminds me the thing i guess what got me really wanting to see jfk is that like you're talking about with it taking with the trial and kind of doing it backwards Mm -hmm. um i had heard more recently i read that um trial of chicago seven had a bit of a jfk feel to it and i thought trial of chicago seven was excellent i loved it it had my single favorite moment of political discourse in any movie ever and it's when uh, eddie redmayne and um crap borat abby hoffman are going back and forth about it's basically the scene where abby hoffman i, I think his name is tom i know i should remember he's a real guy but he basically kind of not squares up to him but it's just like i died to tell look me in the face and tell me what it is about me why do you dislike me so much and the guy and this is what i love this is something really fascinating when people are able to write things that are self-aware and also aware of what the other side of the coin is because the whole point i like not knowing who um oh for pete's sake i just forgot his name the, the writer I, i'm sorry the west wing uh, Sorkin. I have no idea whose side Aaron Sorkin was on because the scene was written that well that you just you don't get that agenda. It's like this is the story. And so he's made it's Abby Hoffman. So of course Abby's the cool one. Abby's gonna be the cool character the whole time. And yeah, man, he's Abby Hoffman. And oh my god, Borat's playing him and it's amazing and it works and it's really good. And then you got Tom, who's a little bit more straight laced, a little more clean cut, a little more I don't want to say system, but this is the guy viewing getting into politics and working from within the system. And so as soon as Abby is asking him, what exactly is your problem with me? Looks him dead in the face and is all like, my problem is that 25 years from now, you're going to be all they talk about. Anytime anyone needs to put out an excuse for why our ideas have to be tamped down, it's going to be Abby Hoffman. And it's like, he's exactly right. That shit is so cool. The way that I love that scene because it's very, very cool 
it's just cool. It's I like it because they put you on the back foot. With the, I can't believe I forgot his dadgum name, but Eddie Redmayne. They put you on the back foot because Abby's cool, and I want to be on Abby's side. And then when he says what he says, it's like, well, shit, he's right. And it's just <laughs> awesome. I, I love that kind of stuff, man. Cool. Anyway, as far as that, there was that, and then what was the other one? Oh, like you're talking about with. Man, Oliver Stone's going to tell us what happened to Kennedy. He's going to explain it. That's the kind of crap that everybody gives. Um, I'm forgetting everybody's name, Fencer, about Zodiac. Because it's all like, well, he's trying to make it sound like it was Arthur Lee Allen, and it's been proven that it wasn't Arthur Lee Allen, because I read this in this book, and, and I got this Google search, and it wasn't Arthur Lee Allen. And it's like, he's not trying to tell you it was. The jackass in the movie, um, Jake Gyllenhaal's character, that is convinced it's Lee Allen, that movie is based on his book. Yeah. The point is not that Arthur Lee Allen was the Zodiac. The point is that this guy, um, I forgot, Gray Smith, was convinced that he was. That's uh, Zodiac is awesome. That is my favorite Fincher movie. I love it. I watch it at least once a year. Holy crap, I love that movie. Yeah, man. Yes, man. This, yeah, this is good. Movie movie night is good, man. On the subject of movie night and biopics, I mentioned this earlier, so I will tell you now. I have a, a seedling of an idea for a screenplay that I want to write now, and I want to do a biopic about Guns N' Roses. But I have a weird idea. It's not even a weird idea. It's just this is where <laughs> this is what it's all based on. I want to do a biopic about Guns N' Roses, but I don't want to get into a Queen situation where well, you know, you got to like clean it up because you got to get the life rights. We talked about it, man. It's like I, I keep I keep picking on Sasha, and I like Sasha, but it's like, man, if you really want to make that Freddie Mercury movie that you keep telling everybody you want to make, just change the name. You be Johnny Jupiter real quick. Everyone's gonna know who you're talking about. Archetypes are your friend. So I want to do a biopic about Guns and Roses, but I want to do the archetypical thing of casting. Each member of Guns N' Roses, obviously, they won't be as themselves because it's an archetype. You'll get who they are. But have everybody in the band be a woman. And the reason I say that is because, oh, it's such a fantastic curveball. Girl, rock stars. Wow. I don't give a shit about that. The reason that I think you should cast women to play Guns N' Roses is, A, then you could really tell the actual story. And, B, the next time you see a picture of Zendaya, imagine her with a top hat on. I mean, bang on in the face. Her and Saul Hudson look just alike. And that is not, I I hope to, I always get in trouble when I say, yeah, that girl looks like this guy. It is not an insult. Slash is a very beautiful person. He is, he's, Slash is much more feminine than Zendaya is not masculine. Well, Zendaya is just Zendaya. But I swear it's like that would work. Zendaya as Slash in the Guns N' Roses biopic. I'm like, "Ah, let's do it. That sounds great. (laughs) I'm, I'm terrible that game when you're trying to compliment somebody and I tell them like, you know who you remind me of? Yeah. And every time I've ever done that, it's always backfired. Like, no, I, I meant, I meant that as a compliment. It's a positive thing. <laughs> it's a positive thing. My ultimate, I know we've talked about it before, but I'm going back to my original subject matter for the evening, man. I'm telling you, if you take photographs of, um, Oh, I forgot his real name. It doesn't matter. You take a picture of Kenny Omega. You put it next to a picture of, um, oh, God, the French actress. Um, Leia Saito. Um, Blue is the Warmest Color and the Bond movie, one of the Bond movies. I'm telling if you, if it was possible for identical twins to be different genders and have completely different parents, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's unreal. They are, it's so awesome. And all that stuff started, you'll get this. All of that stuff started with the crazy Bob Dylan biopic where Kate Blanchett is the most faithful of all the cast members to play Dylan in that movie. She's the one who looks most like him. It's fucking awesome. It is so cool. <laughs> that, that was a cool one. That was cool. Yeah, that was a, it was a cool movie. And I love the idea of getting different actors for different eras because but David Bowie is rock and roll's chameleon and he is, but. Dylan did everything before anybody did anything. The Beatles were looking at to look into Minnesota to see what Dylan was up to. Man, he was Bob Dylan was God. Yeah, yeah. And it went through my you know born again Christian phase, and 
all of the places. <laughs> sure did. Then yeah, man. Dewey Cox wrote a song and that was like mine. I know we've <laughs> talked about it before, man. There's lots of Bob Dylan jokes, and it's usually the sound of the voice, and I get it, and it's all good. But man, that freaking Bob Dylan parody song and Dewey Cox is <laughs> awesome. It is because I love Dylan, yeah. and it's just like. I would listen to the shit out of this. I would totally, I would be Tim Meadows and I would get something out of this. I would totally, I'd be totally in. I love this. <laughs> the Japanese cat or whatever you're thinking about. <laughs> it is it's absolutely insane. Like the, the phrasing is so perfect. Not just the voice, but literally the phrasing. It's like whoever wrote that loves them some Bob Dylan. God dang it. I love it. It is so good, man. <laughs> Yes, Steph Cabbage is the darling of the laundry man. <laughs> such an awesome movie. <laughs> it's so stupid. Man, that's another one I need to watch again, man. Because, I mean, I've seen, we've talked about it, like Dewey Cox and Hot Rod. Anytime either one or both of them is on Netflix, that's pretty much what I go to sleep to. And it's dumb, but, I, you know, recycling. I guess content's the word I want to use, but hey, look, if you like it, watch it as many times as you can. You can't, I can't hear Dewey Tall and Powerful too many times. <laughs> have, have you cast the rest of Guns N' Roses yet? Uh, no, I know, honest yeah. to God, it's like just as soon as I saw Zendaya, it's like it just it wasn't even her really. It was a picture of Slash and he kind of had his hair back and just big smile and smoking a cigarette. And I'm like, I got an idea, but no, uh, unfortunately, I haven't written anything. It's just like, well, I know who's playing Slash, so that's yeah. that's that. <laughs> Start from there and work out. <laughs> yeah, dude, seriously, that's that was my guy. So I'm like, we'll figure the rest of it out. Yeah, um, I think Duff McKagan. Oh, you know what? It just occurred to me who should play Duff. I was going to say, I think Duff will be the easiest to cast because Duff looked like a pretty girl in the '80s anyway. So just mm. cast somebody that's really tall, or shoot it and make her look tall. But I think this person is tall. Dude, freaking Jessamine Duke can play yeah. Duff McKagan, man. That'd be yeah. freaking awesome, man. Oh, man. Especially, I think, compared to Zendaya, she'll look seven feet tall. I think so. I, I think so. Not. It's all like, ooh, <laughs> that might work. So yeah. um, I don't know who else. I don't have Axel yet. I have no idea who should play Axel. Um, but uh, that's cool, though. We got two now. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, freaking uh, Arya Stark could play Izzy Stradlin. That'll work. work. That'll work. <laughs> I don't know if Emma Stone's age appropriate or not, but maybe it'll work. <laughs> I am up for casting Emma Stone in anything. Age appropriate would be nice, but not necessary. I'd love her, man. So I'm, I'm in. <laughs> that sounds That's good. That's what makes up's for. <laughs> yeah, dude, seriously. It's fine. It's fine. I'll make it work, man. <laughs> They're gonna be on Disney. Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't, worry, don't worry about it, brother. Don't yeah. worry about that, brother. <laughs> I won't put that, dude. I don't know about that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what? Speaking of Disney, I did watch. Uh, they dropped the first episode of uh, Marvel's uh, What If. Yeah, cool, it's, uh, man. The, the it's the animated uh, story of. If Peggy Carter had taken the uh, super serum, yeah, and I, I dug, dug the crap out of it, yeah, dug man. it a ton. It's it's pretty much the retelling of Captain America, just from roles being reversed. But so what? I like so, it. So it's the truth, but it's a woman instead of a black guy. Truth was great. That's mm -hmm. it's brutal, but it's a very very realistic story. And it, you know, it leads to <clears throat> Young Avengers, which is awesome. And that's yeah. anyway, I mean, to get sidetracked, but that makes all the sense because I keep seeing stuff and I'm like, oh man, when are they going to start that? And then I never look up the dates. <clears throat> Sorry, but I've been seeing a lot of Captain Carter stuff and it's like, I, that makes sense. It makes sense why I keep seeing that. <clears throat> and um, the lady, I can't believe I forgot her name. Crap! The actress that plays Peggy Carter, I can't believe it's uh, right. Haley Atwell. Okay, see, thank you, because that's what I was thinking was right, but I'm like, I don't know if that's her or not, because I'm thinking, that's, oh, is that is that who's playing a, uh, um, Hawkeye, Kate Bishop? <laughs> it's like, what's what was wrong with me? <clears throat> but um, she did such a good job, in my opinion, going on social media and literally 
I hate the word gaslighting, but she lied to everybody and was paid to was absolutely her job was to make everyone think that she was real mad about that TV show getting canceled. And uh, I'm done with Marvel. F these guys. They got rid of my character. They got rid of me. Screw those guys. And then she showed up in Endgame. And it's like, I t- I swear, I think they had her on like a four year, just like, it just just keep it going. Just keep it stirred up enough, man. And it's all good. I, I think it was all planned and good for them. You just hear Pants and everybody off screen. It's a work. It's a work, Haley. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll we'll get to Vince and works in a moment because I'm uh, I'm with you. We talked about it last week. I'm happy to say we got out there early with that, and uh, that's starting to take root. There's more people now, put basically putting out that. You know, this Bray Wyatt thing feels like bullshit. So I'm like, all right, I'm glad that we're not the only ones that thought it. So it's yeah. we'll get to that. But, uh, but anyway, I'm glad that but most most. Of the characters have uh, come back to lend their voice to the animated show, yeah. And that, and she and she was one of them that is, you know, it's it's her, it's her yeah, doing the yeah. voice. And yeah, buddy. I, they got a really good sound alike to do Steve Rogers. I don't nice. think it's Chris, but uh, there there are a lot of there's there's some pretty big name people just and just doing voiceover work. That was kind of like they they got this guy to do that. Uh, that uh, what's um, I want to forget his name. What the, I got I want to get this right. Uh, Jeffrey Wright oh, yeah. uh, is uh, the Watcher, and he's basically the narrator of what's going to be the show. And uh, that's kind of that. That was the cool reveal that came from. This episode, like you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna hide that. People are gonna find that out pretty quick. So, uh, but uh, he's he's in it. But uh, I I don't know who did the voice of uh, Steve Rogers, but it's I, I I noticed that Chris Evans' name didn't pop up in the intro. It's like, oh well, but they but they got a really good sound like to come back and do it. Yeah, that's cool, so, man. But for for the most part, a lot of the actors from the movies have come back to lend their voice to it. So I thought that was pretty cool. And on top of all that, it's, it's a neat show. And I, I just dug it. <laughs> I, I love the idea. I always like those comic books. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, this is a great idea, man. Especially with all of the, Oh my God, Loki's introduced the multiverse. Like, hell yeah, man, let's do, go right ahead. That's awesome. <clears throat> what if I remember they're just, there's there's a couple of those stories that just sound cool as shit. They really do, man. I'm looking very forward to, um, Oh my God! How did I forget his dad? Yandu, hanging out with yeah. T'Challa. I can't wait for that. That is like, oh yeah. shit! That's gonna be neat, man. Yeah, uh, that one's coming up. There's a, they're doing the Marvel Zombies episode and uh, some some others that I, I, I don't recall all what they're doing, but I'm just looking forward to what's coming up next. Yeah, dude, <laughs> seriously, I, they we're good. Whatever, whatever show you got next, I'll be there. Yeah, man. <laughs> So that was worth go checking out. I would Very say. Cool. Um, I'm looking on the subject we were just talking about. Um, Stanfield. I think I, I, it's interesting. I don't remember if it's. I, I, I'm sorry. I think it's Haley Stanfield is the name of the actress that's playing Kate Bishop. Uh, so it's like, I was like, that's where I got messed up as Haley Atwell got stuck in my head. And I'm like, no, that's not her. And it's like, I, I totally think that that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's, I got hung up on the first name. <laughs> she was uh, the girl from uh, True Grit, True Grit. And, uh, Bum- and Bumblebee. That's right. Yeah, that's so. But t- both Haley's spelled. Yeah, it, that's what messed me up, and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, but so we're good. But that I'm looking the Hawkeye. I'm looking real forward to because I love that. Basically, that I know we talked about it. The the Hawkeye comic book series where they don't, I don't want to say don't explain, but it was just such a cool idea to do a book called Hawkeye. It's like, yeah, it's a solo Hawkeye book. And it turns out that it kind of is a solo Hawkeye book, but it's also a team Hawkeye book. And then when it's a solo Hawkeye book, sometimes it's Hawkeye Clint and sometimes it's Hawkeye Kate. It's like, this is cool as hell, dude. It was such a neat idea, man. Like, it's a team book called Hawkeye because that's both of them. 
but it's an individual yeah. book because they're both Hawkeye. So whichever one you're talking about, that's what we're gonna call the book. I, it was <laughs> it was cool. I just I love that series. Anyway, I've got it sitting over there. I'm looking at it right now. <clears throat> without was, without without spoiling anything too crazy and too out there, but that's if there's one tie-in from the Black Widow movie to what's going on the in the cinematic universe but it's really i think it's more of a tie-in to what is going to be happening on disney plus is the end scene at the end of black widow is the tie-in to the hawkeye show makes total sense man and i'm like give me (laughs) give me give me give me (laughs) yeah i can't i'm really excited about that one that's uh i haven't done loki yet i need to I need to look up and see when Hawkeye's coming out. It seems like it's a while, so it's like... I think, like, I think it's going to be a minute. I think so. I was like, maybe you should just wait and do them all. And I was like, ah, it's probably not a good idea. It's probably too long to wait. Mm-hmm. So I will watch Loki, and maybe I will let What If finish up, though, because that's cool. That's They're good. doing it right now. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. Yeah, man. I don't think there's going to be very many of them, so it shouldn't be too long until they're yeah. all done. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool, man. That's the, I think that's what I'll do. I got what I'll do. Yeah, yeah, man. Because I think freaking uh, Shang Chi is out like the first week of September or something like that. So they're man. they're back to pumping these things out <laughs> left and right. Seriously, um, <clears throat> I don't remember what I was going to discuss. I'm sorry, man. It just shot out of my head. Man, uh, we're talking about a uh, NXT being a work. <laughs> I, yeah, I hope it is. I, I love the idea of, man, NXT's been canceled. We don't want any more of these midgets and la dee and woo-hoo and blah, blah, blah and all that stuff. And then we have <laughs> protected Roman Reigns. And, Ooh, John Cena really got him. And it's like, y'all really need this stuff bad, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> John Cena is going to call Roman Reigns protected and you're going to run with it? Are you fucking serious? And my point being... <laughs> This didn't make any sense. <laughs> it's, uh, dude, that's where I'm at. I'm like, why are you guys getting so much out of this promo? None of that makes any sense at all. None of yeah. it. It's, oh, yeah. And then he had, like, the Dean Ambrose reference and, and, and the CM Punk reference. It was like, yeah, that CM Punk shit happened to him. It really? happened. What? I don't understand. I just don't know why this puts him on the stage as little Johnny Badass. But I do <laughs> like the idea now of Cena winning the title. And then Roman being the catalyst for the NXT takeover, as you and I have talked about, because he did start there. That would be awesome. I just, I, it really, all that NXT shit just feels fake to me. It really does, man. And it's like, what better way to make people think the shit is real than, oh man, it's TV networks and it's business and it's, it's calls on the, the, you know, second quarter earnings calls. And it's like, why the fuck is anyone listening to this shit? But okay. If you want to turn that into a storyline, cool. I, that's just what it feels like, and uh, I hope anyway. But it, it doesn't matter. The only thing, the only thing to have anything to do with a AEW NXT I care about is where Adam Cole signs, and if we go where I think we're going, it really doesn't matter where he signs because everyone's going to wind up working together anyway. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, man. So however we want to do it is cool, but it is funny because I heard the rumor today was that Adam Cole was offered a million dollars to stay, and it's like. Well, there you have it. They got plans for this guy. He's going to be fast-tracked to the moon. And it's like, hey, how have you not figured out yet the contracts in WWE don't mean a goddamn thing? That's one. Yeah. That, that's if it's true. Two, weren't y'all the same motherfuckers talking a week ago? But oh, he's just so little, and it's so stupid, and he's awful, and he's an indie vanilla midget, and la dee All this bullshit talked about Adam Cole. Now, all of a sudden, y'all want him to be the savior? I think he is. But heard a whole lot of guff about that shit. And now nobody wants to come out and say, God, a million? Are y'all crazy? It's just, it's the strangest thing to me, man. Y'all talk about how overrated the guy is. Then when he talks about going to AEW, then you want to give him shit. Now you want to say he's a million dollar main event player. And it's like, please, please decide. Come on, man. This is not, this ain't that hard. Shouldn't be anyway. I can't remember what podcast it was I was listening to. I don't think it was Marty and Sarah. It may have been, uh, we watch wrestling, but somebody made the point like, guys, not everybody wants to work with a girlfriend. I don't, don't, 
So I've heard that, this... that from, and that's the thing. Like Britt actually made that point where people are all like, "Oh man, Adam Coley's going to come work with you, right? He's going to come work with you because you guys are dating." And she's like, "Y'all do realize how much mileage he's got with half the people in this roster, right? So there's people that for his career go way deeper than he and I. So yeah. hold on, but yeah. I'm I'm just with you. I just think everyone's going to wind up working together anyway. So it yeah. really it does not matter. Um, yeah. But ultimately, like, my main thing is, well, if he takes that million dollars, they'll put him on the main roster and ruin him. Get the fuck out of here, man. I don't know what y'all are talking about. I, I don't understand that. It's like, yeah, you can put him on the main roster, and so fucking what if they do? But what will happen is, I guess my question is this. Do you really think they're going to waste him for, oh, man, it's a million dollars. It's a five-year contract. For a million dollars. Okay. And to the rebuttal, this, some idiot was all like, man, the most Tony Khan would ever give him is 500000 And I'm like, A, you don't fucking know that. B, do you not know how to divide one million by five? $500,000 is a fuck ton more than two hundred. dollars yeah. That's, that's not yeah. that hard to put together. It's like, okay, you really think Tony's going to offer him five hundred grand for a year versus a million dollars for five? I'm telling you, yeah, I understand this. I was a public school kid too. And yes, it is a sad state of affairs. But man, if you, I, I guess people are so weird about that with like the contracts and sports and whatnot. People hear the number and apparently they think that's annual. It's like, no, no, no. They give you the years for a reason. You have to buy that shit. It's like, it's not a million dollars. It'd be great if it was, but that's what you and I talked about, man. I was hoping that's what they would do with him, period, is give him main roster money and leave him at NXT. But if you don't want to do that, that's all right. But like I said, it doesn't really matter. The main thing with Adam Cole is he's your invader. It's it's great. All this stuff could be very cool. The only the only part, the only problem, I shouldn't say part, the only problem that I have with any of this stuff is that you know, and I know as well as you do, that any crossover stuff you get is ultimately going to end with Randy Orton wins. So I'm like, any, any wrestling program, New Japan, AEW, I don't care, anything that Randy Orton's on, I'm like, I'm not watching this shit. I hate that guy. I've hated him his entire career, and I'm going to hate him his entire career because literally his uncle knows where the bodies are buried. There is no other way to explain to me why he gets the preferential treatment he gets. There's no way. He ain't that entertaining. He ain't that engaging. His promo sucks. His merch sales suck. But Uncle Terry knew something about Vinny's company that Vinny wants to keep under wrap. I just, I'm telling you, I'm working. People have all that stupid, you know, Randy Savage, he used to go out with Stephanie McMahon. That's all bullshit. But if you can explain to me why Randy Orton is what he is, other than the fact that his uncle was like, yeah, one of your vice presidents is molesting boys. I just, I'm sorry, man. I feel, no, I mean, that's been disproven. No, the fuck, it has not. Mm-hmm. And the new defense says, Pat Patterson's dead. You got to leave him alone. And I'm like, don't nobody give a fuck about Pat Patterson. Don't nobody care. Because it's, well, but that, that, that's got nothing to do with Vince. Great, then tell him to stop covering the shit up. If it, if the shit's gonna exonerate you, let it go. It's, it, that whole thing just makes me nuts, and I guess that's my issue with. I love 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 the crossover. I love the idea of everybody working together, but there is so much horseshit WWE. Oh, Randy's the best, and fucking uh, Cody Rhodes. Oh, Randy's the best. That it's like. If we turn American professional wrestling into the Randy Orton show, I'm very happy to not have cable anymore because I'm not watching any of that shit. I hate that guy. It's the only, it's the only downside. I hate to be that way because again, like we said, it's the one negative thing. So it sucks. I'm being stupid obsessing over it. I shouldn't do that. There's a lot more cool crossover stuff. I guess the real reason I'm ill about it is because for all the breaking down of walls and opening of forbidden doors or whatever we want to talk about. My ultimate dream wrestling match in 2021, as it has been for the last five years, is still nowhere on the horizon because Revival Briscoes is just, man, Ring of Honor's just got that wall. And I'm like, will y'all please get in here and play with everybody else? Come on, man. (laughs) Go out of business or something. (laughs) It's like, dude, come on, just get in here. 
get in here with everybody, which I think what Ring of Honor's doing, honest to God, I think what they're doing, in my opinion, I hope I'm wrong, but it seems to me, and there's no reason why they should even think this anymore, but it seems to me that they know outside of WWE, they are the only company that has a tape library worth a shit that yeah. Vince might actually buy because TNA ain't going to sell. That, so that's not going anywhere. Yeah. But the Ring of Honor tape library, oh man, you got all that good old stuff with, you know, AJ and Brian Danielson. Oh shit, wait, he went to that other company. Well, no. the, AJ, you know what I mean? But the problem that you're running into is Vince don't give a fuck about his own tape library anymore. So it's like that window has closed so please don't tell me that what you're hanging on for is a big old paycheck from <laughs> with the Coliseum video logo on it yeah yeah that's <laughs> yeah I, I really i think now that i'm sitting here thinking about it i guess that's what i'm upset about is that for all the crossover shit it's like i will put up with randy orton being the king god of wrestling woohoo if it means i can see the briscoes wrestle um ftr but i just I don't think we're close to that. And I'm like, damn it, come on. <laughs> time's wasting. <laughs> yeah, time's a wasting. Get down with it, man. Hell yeah. Shoot, man. That's about all I know what's going down. Man, yeah, I ain't been up to much of nothing. The, uh, the only real sports stuff I know about going on is I think the Hawks got all their draft picks signed up, so I'm happy about that, yeah. which is real good. And that kid from Auburn, I can't believe that we got that guy as late as we did because he oh, is like, yeah. hey, it's like, oh, my God, I saw those numbers, and I'm like, well, I like this. I'm going to keep an eye on this dude. And, it uh, worked out with a lot of uh, the stuff that we did uh, in the draft and getting everybody signed up, Get Jalen Johnson and uh, Shafari Cooper. And then on top of all that, everybody's like, oh, how are they going to get John Collins signed up? It's going to work out. And it did. That was the point, was you wait to see what I'm telling you. I'm still, I believe that I'm correct about this. So, of course, I'm going to die on this hill. But you wait and see what the fuck's going to happen with Kawhi. That's mm -hmm. what they were waiting on. And the second Kawhi re-signed, it's like, they make that shit work. Because the whole point was you hold out for a sign and trade if you need to. But I, I'm happy with where everybody landed. I like Kawhi with the Clippers. Love Collins with the Hawks. So that's very, very good. And I'll tell you the other one that I am yeah. so happy about. Is I can't believe we got Sweet Lou re-signed. I am yeah. so happy about that because I love that guy. And I'm like, that made me really happy that uh, old Lemon Pepper wants to stay at home. And I'm like, I, I love it. I was real, real concerned about I shouldn't say concerned. I was already stealing myself up to like, oh man, he's not going to be here next year. And I, that's awesome. I'm really glad he is. Yeah, I, can, I can't say the day of the draft, I was scared. I was scared because there was all type of rumors going around how the Hawks were going to trade up by trading Cam Reddish and their pick to go up in the draft. I was like, y'all don't think you need to do that. Nobody in the I don't think you need to do that. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was a nice, solid draft, but yeah, I just, I'm with you. It's like, and I mean, I understand that Reddish 1000% shot windowed the hell out of himself in the Eastern Conference Finals because that guy hadn't played in months and he looked like a fucking world beater. I'm like, yeah. go on, kid. Good for you, man. But yeah, I'm glad, I'm really happy <laughs> to see the Hawks hold back. That's a good ass team, man. Like we said, we get the great benefit of basically everybody's coming back the expectations that you don't have that's come back too because ain't nobody looking at atlanta i'm like thank you very much we'll take it i love yeah. it man wouldn't have it any other way really oh, God. i'm with you it's like this is the best the only time you're gonna hear about trey young is when he goes back to the garden but all that yeah. stuff is fine i, I was really i was pleased with our draft picks I was very happy about that and also like we've talked about man um i think it was charles barkley um Sorry, my nose is itchy. I think it was Barkley that was um, on TNT that really put Schlink over. And I'm like, good. I'm glad someone's finally talking about it. But the point was, I mean, the draft picks are one thing. He's drafted really well. But, dude, our free agent signings, man, it's like the trades for Bogey, signing Lou, or the trade for Lou Williams and signing Bogey. And it's just like, he has made good damn decisions. And I'm like, yes, he has. That's awesome. That's very cool to hear talked about on national TV like that. So here we go again, another another draft round, and it's like, I'm loving this. I'm very, very, very excited about the uh, Hawks prospects for the future. This is just cool shit, man. Yeah, man. 
on the subject of prospects for the future. Um, United have changed coaches again. I'm hoping it's going to work out this time. I'm going to just shut the hell up about it because every time I get excited about any of our new coaches based off of their club history, it does not work out. And I'm like, well, just, and I don't know the new guys. So I'm like, that's probably good because all the the guys that you were excited about because you knew about them didn't work. So now not knowing this guy, I didn't know who Tata Martino was either. That worked out great for all of us. So I'm like, yes, let's just, let's ride this, uh, this rail. This is good. Um, on the subject of soccer, and then I will leave it be. Uh, Premier League season started on, I think it was yesterday. And when I tell you that Manchester United went buck wild crazy, I mean it. They beat Leeds United 5-1. 5-1, dude. And my man, my mainest man, Paul Pogba, who all summer was rumored to be going to PSG, and he still might. Pogba's a Frenchman, and boy, does PSG have the money to spend, and are they ambitious? That sucker had four assists in that game. I kid you not. It was unbelievable. That second goal was uh, Marcus Rashford, who is a very, very good goal scorer. But I swear to God, that pass that Pogba hit him with is staggering. It's one of those things that if you don't even watch soccer, you can just see that play. And not after the fact, as it's happening, you will know that you are seeing special shit. It's like watching um, uh, Randy Johnson throw a um, – oh, uh, it's not a breaker. What was it that Randy used to throw all the time? Shoot, 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 slider. Randy, it's like a Randy Johnson slider. You don't have to know anything about the physics of a slider. When you saw Randy do it, it was like, what the hell did I just see? <laughs> that, po- that Pogba pass to Rashford, and the finish was great, too. I don't mean to take it off of Rash. It was an awesome finish, but, oh, my God, it was just – I was – thrilled it was awesome and don't get me wrong i didn't excuse me i didn't watch the game because i just i just cables useless and i got rid of it but man if you just hang out on youtube and wait till they post the highlight videos man it's like well at least i'll know what happened and who scored and how and to be fair um nbc's youtube stuff this is their nfl stuff too it's really good it's not just touchdowns and I mean they, they they'll tell you the story they really put very good critical plays like the um the NFL stuff they do they'll put like massive serious third down stops and I'm like that's what I'm talking about that's that's story stuff so I love that whoever edits their crap is I know it's not one person doing all of it but apparently the editing staff at NBC Sports is awesome regardless of whatever sport they're covering yeah, man. 5-1. I was really happy that United won. And also, Pogba still might be going. The transfer window ain't closed. But as far as PSG having ambition and money, got Sergio Ramos and they got, I cannot remember. It seems like they had three massive, massive signings. And a couple of days ago, they signed fucking Messi. So it's like, these, these boys ain't fucking around. But on the subject of Messi, let me get this out because I keep seeing a lot of talk and all of this. Well... Barcelona really messed up by not re-signing Massey. They never should have let Massey go. Let me tell you what happened at Barcelona. Barcelona takes out bank loans from the Bank of Spain because Spain has a centralized bank like most countries in Europe do. And they take out loans from the official National Bank of Spain to buy any player they want. And every single year, that debt is erased by the politicians in Spain. They do it every single year. But that administration that was all about Barcelona, not only never having to pay back their transfer loans, but also letting Messi skirt on his taxes, they got voted out. So with the new guys coming in, Barcelona's got a big old back tab they have to pay back to the government, and Messi's going to start paying his taxes. So of course he skedaddled as fast as he fucking could. And the choices were one of two places. You're either going to Manchester to play for City or you're going to Paris to play for PSG. And I don't mean to diss Manchester at all. It is the home of Oasis. It's the home of Man United, who I love very dearly. There ain't no goddamn way I'm going anywhere in England. I'm not going anywhere on this earth over Paris, much less anywhere in England. I'm not going to go get rained on if I can go to Paris for the same or more money. This is insane. So I, I like it. I mean, I hope he does well. Because I, I love PSG, man. So I shouldn't say I love them. I like PSG. It's hard to love PSG. They're just, they're such a horribly just, <laughs> it's just such a corporate juggernaut. I mean, it's like being like, I love McDonald's. I hope they have a good sales tomorrow. <laughs> PSG is going to be just fine. <laughs> they're they're, they're going to be okay. They don't need me to pull for them. Mm-hmm. 
But anyhow, I'm sorry to get sidetracked on all the soccer stuff. But yeah, no one's talking about like the bank loans and the taxes. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I left, man. To get real, dude. Yeah. <laughs> don't have to pay taxes to live in one of the best cities in the whole wide world. I say good on you, Leo. Have fun. <laughs> you go right ahead, man. Get down with it. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't blame you. One iota. I will not eat one iota of shit. <laughs> it's my favorite line from Not <laughs> Sound. It's stupid, but it makes me laugh. <laughs> Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, man. Y'all, thank you for watching. Heck yeah, man. I'll see y'all. Yeah. Bye.